Hello, today I'm sharing one of the quickest, easiest ways to get a flattering winged eyeliner look if that's something you normally struggle with for whatever reason. Maybe you have hooded eyes, downturned or deep set eyes, or age-related issues that make winged liner more difficult than it used to be, or maybe it just takes you longer than you'd like. Whatever the reason, this is the method I've been doing pretty much every time I do winged liner. It works really well for me, so I thought it was about time I shared it with you, and it's actually using a method that I used to reserve only for special occasions that's become my go-to method as I've gotten older and some creases and folds are in the way, which makes the traditional liquid liner method more difficult and pretty much impossible. So I hope this helps you in some way. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Let's get into this flattering winged eyeliner that's great for anyone of any age, especially those of you over 40 like me. It's been a while since I've added to my Challenging Eyes series I figured it was about time and this is a great method to start with. Today I'm doing my eyes after foundation and between my corrector and concealer steps. You can do this at any point. You can do your eyes first before foundation. You can do this before you put anything under your eyes. Whatever works for you. I just wanted to show you that if you do wear both corrector and concealer, this is something that you can do before or between those steps and it's not going to mess anything up. It is a good thing to have your brows done first as well, whether you do them before you have any makeup on or after you apply your foundation, just so that frame of reference is there to have that visual guide, that perimeter there as we're doing the eyeliner. Speaking of framework, there's a framework or a perimeter you want to keep in mind so that your eye doesn't get dragged down and so you keep that uplift. You want to envision your lower lash line extending into infinity. In the past, I've kept things confined to this area freehanded. It's been fine, but I find it so much quicker and easier and have less mistakes by giving myself a physical border like a card or an object like I am here but I prefer to use tape this has nothing to do with Sephora it's not sponsored this is just the tape that I have I'm keeping my eyes relaxed and placing this at that angle I showed you earlier over any folds or creases that doesn't matter just place the tape down at that angle and repeat on the other side making the angles as even as possible it may be difficult if your eyes are asymmetrical like mine are just do the best you can I find this tape very easy to work with but I will have have other options listed and linked below for you. You can even use medical tape. You just want to make sure that it peels off very easily and doesn't tug at your skin. Today I'm using the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. You can use any palette you want. I'm dipping a small pencil brush into a deep shade and tapping off the excess. And now I'm closing my eye and gliding kind of haphazardly this pencil brush along my lash line and gradually building it up. And since I'm doing a wing, I am extending it a bit past the outer corner. This is really where you can customize it and make it your own. How far you extend it past that corner is up to you. How far you take it along your eyelid is also up to you. I like to stop around the center point of my eyelid because I really like most of my lift to be on the outer half of my eye. You probably notice it's not that neat of a line. It's not supposed to be right now. We're going to mess with that here in a minute. You can also build it up as much as you want if you want to have a thicker line, a longer line. If you want to curve the tail up a little bit more along the tape towards the brow, you can do that too. I'll show you some tweaks and some options here in a second, but first we need to repeat this on the second eye. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit since we already did it. But since my eyes are slightly uneven, I thought it might benefit you to see this on both sides as opposed to just one. Something I didn't note earlier is that obviously you can use any shade you want. You can use black, brown. I'm using just a deep warm gray that I find to be a little bit softer and very flattering for my coloring in particular. And you'll notice that I am looking back and forth quite a bit to make sure everything looks nice and even, which when in comparison, to that process with liquid liner is so much easier. You could leave that as is and have a really nice smoky wing or you can do what I'm doing and dip a smaller pencil brush into a mid-toned neutral shadow and run it along that top border of what we just did. It just helps diffuse everything and finish everything off but for some reason that shade wasn't working for me so I went into a slightly deeper shade and that worked a little bit better for me on this particular day. I don't know why. Sometimes that just happens. It's trial and error. This optional smudging step may be just the thing for you if you have extra creases, folds, or lines that make eyeliner look kind of jagged on top. It may actually make things look smoother. It's also really nice if you like a smoky look to your eyeliner, which can be really flattering on those of us over 40. 
Since our perimeter is still established with that tape, this is a great time to go back into that mid-tone shade to place above our crease to give depth and shadow to the hood of the eye without having to worry about dragging our eyes down or creating a droopy look since that tape is there as our border. That's the beauty of using tape. Because you can be messier with your eyeliner and eyeshadow application, the process is much quicker. Now this is optional, but if you find you want more depth or definition close to your lash line or anywhere, really dip an angled brush into the same liner shade we used earlier and press it wherever you want that definition. Now it's time to dust away any fallout that may have occurred and remove that tape, which leaves you with a nice crisp bottom line. And that is what I find is key to giving you this winged look. If needed, you can clean that line up with a bit of concealer and a tiny concealer brush. Here, I'm just taking a blending brush and softly diffusing that eyeshadow line above the eyeliner really quickly. Now, if when you remove that tape, you find it took off some of your eye cream from your skincare or it took off some of that corrector, you can always reapply now since you don't have your concealer on yet. And as you can see, I've moved forward with curling my lashes which apparently can't be done without this involuntary mouth movement. I don't know what that's about, but curling your lashes is very important when it comes to giving lift to your eyes. I put concealer on before mascara today. I'm just breezing through this so you can see that I am putting concealer on, which does brighten and help lift your eyes because it gets rid of the darkness and helps camouflage and highlight. I set my face and did the rest of my makeup off camera since it's a bit off topic and I'm I'm adding a touch of highlight to my inner corner because it brightens and I thought it would be a nice effect. And to give my eyes a more finished look and to open them up a little bit more, I'm taking that same mid-tone shadow we used above the crease and I'm gliding it along the lower lash line to meet that wing that we made. It gives the eyes an almost undetectable effect but adds a little something that wasn't there before. Now it's time for mascara or false lashes. Whatever you want to do here, I'm applying a light coat of waterproof to hold my curl and then I'm going in with a more voluminous formula to give length and volume. I don't know why but specifically on camera I always feel like one of my eyes has lashes that look so much longer and thicker than the other. I feel like the lashes are practically invisible on the eye on your left but in person I feel like they look fine. I don't know what it is. So I've been promising you I would show you some kind of demo with these KISS no glue needed stick on lashes that I've been using quite often, especially for quick days. This is optional. You can just do mascara, but I wanted to show you how easy these are. You just place the cluster underneath your natural lashes using either your fingers, tweezers, or the applicator that comes with the lashes, and you squeeze the lashes in the cluster together until you feel they're fused together and everything's firmly in place. It's very easy, and they last me from morning until night. Comfortably, I don't feel them. They don't irritate my eyes. So this is an option if you're wanting something a little bit more than mascara. And this is the finished look with the wing that normally takes me maybe three minutes to do when I'm not talking you through it. This is really just the framework. You can go as simple or as dramatic as you like, keeping it to just liner and mascara, or doing an entire eyeshadow look using mattes or shimmers. As with any makeup, it's all what you want to do with it. This has really been working for me lately. It doesn't take any time at all if I'm not walking you through it. I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you'll be trying it in the comments down below, and subscribe if you enjoy Everyday Beauty Made Easy. If you want to see some other challenging eye videos, be sure to check this playlist out for some more. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.